the book of Joel, chapter 3, starting from verse 2. I will also gather all the nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Yahweh, Shaphat, meaning the Lord Yahweh has judged and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Joel chapter 3 verse 9, it says, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. It says, Beat your plowshares, which is more, which is what? Your farming equipment into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourself and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourself together, run about thither. Cause the mighty ones to come down, O Lord Yahweh. The angels are also going to join in. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen run about. I would like to begin this lesson by giving honor and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. These are the names of our forefathers. The power they called upon is Yahweh, our heavenly father, and his only begotten son, the king of Israel, the root and offspring of King David, the bright and morning star, the king of kings, the lord of lords, the beginning and the ending, the alpha and the omega. Yahweh Shai, let's give double honors to our head, apostles, the elders, the bishop from the great millstone that taught us this truth. Salutation, peace to all the brothers out there doing this work in sincerity and in truth. Again, Shalom to the large multitude, always begin with 144,000. That's right. Spread among all these nations, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, African Americans, Native Americans. These are the names the oppressor gave us, but we are the Israelite, the Hebrew Israelite. And everything that you're seeing happening right now is leading to the second coming of our King, our Redeemer. It's leading to the end of this kingdom, the self-proclaimed white man, his kingdom is coming to an end and the beginning of the Israelite's kingdom. That's right. This is what it's all about. And we're going to get right into it. We have a few articles to cover. We know that things are brewing up in the Middle East, so-called Middle East, which is West Asia. And we know three American soldiers were killed, almost 35 wounded. And now the, the drum is beating loud and clear. You have senators saying that we have to take out the head of the snake, which is Iran. They won that third world war. And that's what exactly the Lord has proclaimed. He says, bring all of them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. That is where he's going to sit and proclaim judgment upon the heathen. We're going to open it up with the first article. This is fun. Everybody's reporting on this. Everybody's reporting on this. Okay. But here we go. This is coming from RT. Excuse me. It's a U.S. troops killed in Jordan, drone attack. The Jordan king came out and said, no, this didn't happen in Jordan. As a matter of fact, it happened in Syria. But America will not come and say it happened in Syria because they are illegally occupying Syria. So they blame it on Jordan. The family, the narrative is not working anymore. Self-proclaimed white man, all he has done over the years when the Lord was actually allowing him to destroy the world with what? To destroy the world with what? His lies, his wickedness. At one point it was working, but no more. Because why? This is the end of this wicked kingdom. It's finally coming to an end. And we're going to see it. The Lord is going to give us the pleasure. Family, believe it. 
the Lord Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahusha, he's going to give us the pleasure to see the end of this wicked kingdom. It says it is the first time that American military personnel have died by enemy fire since the start of the Israel Hamas war. Three U.S. Army soldiers have been killed and many others wounded by an overnight drone attack in Jordan. President Joe Biden has announced the strike on a U.S. Army outpost represents a significant escalation of simmering tensions in the Middle East. A press release issued by the U.S. Central Command, CENTCOM, on Sunday listed the number of American personnel injured in the attack at 25. The number has gone up. It's around 37 right now. Last night, three U.S. service members were killed and many wounded during the unmanned aerial drone attack on our forces stationed in the northeast Jordan near the Syrian border. It was in Syria, family. It was not in Jordan because the king of Jordan came out and said, no, this didn't happen in what? In Jordan. Because now you are occupying, you are illegally occupying Syria, stealing resources. So you couldn't come out and say that, yeah, it happened in a place that we were illegally occupying. You see, Biden said in a statement issued by the White House on Sunday, while we are still gathering the facts of this attack, we know it was carried out by radical here, yeah, Iran back. Because they have to put Iran there because what? They claim Iran is what? The head of the snake. But we are waiting because Russia is going to defend Iran. Because the Lord is not a man that should lie. Family, every word that is written in that Bible, yes, we eat it up. We believe the word of the Lord. If it comes from the Lord, family, we believe it. So yes, Iran is not going to be overtaken. But Russia is going to step in at the right time. Because Ezekiel 37, 38, sorry, has to be fulfilled. Eh? Last night, three U.S. I read that already. Mm. It's a Biden said in a statement issued by the White House on Sunday. While we are still gathering facts of this attack, we know it was carried out by the radical Iran-backed militant group operating in Syria and Iraq. Prior to Friday, there had been at least 158 attacks on U.S. and coalition forces in Iraq and Syria, according to CNN. However, the vast majority of the operation had not posed a serious threat or caused major damage to infrastructure. We're going to leave it there. But here is what I wanted to bring out, just to bring this to your attention. Because a comment was made here. It says here, Mr. President, this is Jason Brod uh, Brodsky. Eh? Mr. President, this crosses a line. You have to hit. Who is this guy here? I think it's a it's a it's a member. It's member. No, who's Jason? I thought he was a senator. Let me see here. Let's do this quickly. I want to find out who this guy is. I thought it was in the article. Please bear with me. If you know, we're just going to Google his name. Jason M. Brodsky. Let's find out. Jason M. Brodsky. Who is he? Is it an Arthur? Oh, yeah. Okay, here. This is always this. Yeah, here. This is him. It's a Jason M. Brodsky. Eh? Small hat. Okay. Is currently the policy director of United Against Nuclear Iran. You hear that? Where he manages his research and writing portfolios. He's also known a resident scholar at the Middle East Institute of Iran program. Eh? Okay, now. So now we know who he is. Hmm? That's why he says, let's go, let's go, let's go already. But here, this is what he says. Mr. President, this crosses a line. Hmm? You have to hit Iran terrorists and hit them hard. Aim for targets that hold strategic significance for Iran's regime. Not merely its proxies. Aim for the head of the octopus. Not merely its tentacles. That's right. 
this is the end. This is the spirit that we want these people to be in. Hmm? Daniel McAdams. Biden is in a corner. He has no moves. Eh? But um, where was it? I saw another one. Breaking. U.S. announced that, okay, three soldiers. Let me see. There's something else I wanted to bring out. Uh, so, family, you get the point. So, it is escalating. Iran is the target. Con sorry. Congressional Hawk Edge hit Iran hard. After three U.S. troops killed by Tehran aligned militants, family, what is the Lord says? That's right. The book of Habakkuk, chapter two, verse three. Again, Third World War was given to our beloved Apostle John, one of Yahweh's favorite apostles, in the island of Patmos, and through the angel, and and one, and uh, sorry. Let's go back. Again, the angel revealed to John that what? There will be three wars, family. The last war. That's why we're going to continue to beat this drum. Whether you want. Yes, it sounds repetitive, but we could kill it. We are telling you that the king is coming. Okay? We're not going to stop until he finally pulls the plug. Once they take down the internet, that's it. That's the farming of the word. But until the internet is still up, we're going to continue to bring it out. One more war, and it's called Third World War. Eh? They tell you in the Revelation 11, verse 13 or 40, it says what? The Third War is past. Behold, sorry, the Second War is past. The Second War is Second World War. It says, Behold, the Third War cometh quickly. You see, the Third War cometh quickly. That's the Third World War. That's what you see right now. So, yes, although it tells you, it says, Wait for it. It says, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3. For the vision. Which is what? The prophecy is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, it feels like it's taking forever. Wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. The end of this wicked kingdom is coming to an end. The end of this kingdom. Eh? Let's go here. This is what I was looking for. The only answer to this attack must be a devastating military retaliation against Iran's terrorist forces, both in what? Iran and across the Middle East. Anything less will confirm Joe Biden as a coward unworthy of being commander-in-chief. Republica, Republican Senator Tom Cotton of Arkansas. Family, this is the energy that we want them to be in. That's right. The Biden administration can take out all the Iranian proxies they like, but it will not deter Iranian aggression. I am calling on the Biden administration to strike targets of significance inside Iran, not only as reprisal for the killing of our forces, but as a deterrence against future aggression. Hit Iran hard. Hit them now. That's what we want, family. Because the king, Yahweh Shai, and before those nuclear missiles, yes, right, our king, Yahweh Shai, is going to be here. Hmm? That's what we're waiting for. That's what we're waiting for. Tawada Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. This is what brings joy to our heart. Escalation, escalation, escalation. Hmm? But now listen to this. This man here, apparently, you know, we're going to read a bit of it. He made uh, this so-called, uh, you know, because at the end of the day, the Lord says what? He poured his spirit on men, right? All it says in, in the book of Joel. And men will have dreams, right? You see? Let's go. Let's get it. It says, uh, in the last day, the Lord will pour his spirit. Let me see. Is it? Let me see here. Um, and men shall have dreams. Joel 2.8, right? It says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Now you got to buy. Now you know at the end of the day, the Lord can pour his spirit on these so-called Edomites also. Eh? But hear what this man says. We know that at the end of the day, yes, family, we know how the end is going to play out. The Lord already proclaimed the end. America is going to be on fire. Civil war is coming. But hear what this man has said. Okay? It says, Russia State Duma member, you can't save America. There will be no election in 2024 because America will not exist. 
family, the beginning of the year, our beloved Apostle Tahar and proclaim 2024 to be the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. Family, that brought a lot of joy to our heart. And we pray that indeed that prophecy, that proclamation will come to pass because the Bible tells us what? That's right. Although it is Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah 37, but Jacob shall be saved out of it. So we're hoping that when all, when all family, everything started falling apart, eh? Yahweh Shai will step in. And that is, that is the hope. That, fam, that's the faith that he has given us. All our family, we don't have plan B. We don't have plan C. We don't have plan D. All our hope, all our eggs are in one basket. And it's the basket of Yahweh Shai. That's why we put all our hope and dreams are upon the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Okay? We have no plan B. I don't have no plan B. Okay? So if you wish I don't come, that's it. I'm done. But we know. <laughs> no, the, the Lord, you see, he's not the man that shall lie. You see? Because from the beginning, he tells you what is going to ha happen. He says he declared the end from the beginning. He told us that he would deliver. He's told us that he's the one that parked us on those slave ships, gave us into the hands of this nation, sent us to all different captivities, starting from with Babylon to Persia, me to the Greek, the Roman family. He's the Lord, the Lord that gave us into the hands of this nation to be slaves. Eh? But now the same Lord is about to gather all of us, the hopeful elect, and take us home. Man, listen to this. It says here, Russia, Vladimir, I'm going to call him, it's a, oh, Zeranovsky, in his final speech to the Russian Duma, said there won't be an election in 2024 because America won't exist. Hmm. This was the same speech where he predicted to the day when Russia would enter Ukraine. The speech was given over two years ago. And no one thought anything of it because Zelensky was rather bellicose. He died in April 2022, months after his speech. With his amazing declaration about Russia entering Ukraine, having been so accurate, his prediction about America is more than a bit disconcerting. Here is the part of the speech to the Russia State Duma. They are equivalent to our House representatives, wherein he speaks about America. Уже Трамп снял лозунг "Сделаем Америку великой, спасем Америку". Вот правильно Трамп. Только не удастся тебе спасти Америку, ибо выборов в двадцать четвертом году в Америке не будет, потому что Америки не будет, значит и выборов не будет. Пусть в гольф играет последние разы на этом гольф поле. Given what is now taking place in Texas border, wherein Texas has had to seize a portion of their land back from the federal government to stem the flow of millions of illegal aliens, and wherein the Biden regime has given Texas an ultimatum to allow federal agents back or face the consequences, it seems entirely possible that actual civil war may break out very soon over this civil war could end up being no America anymore. That's right. Second Ezra chapter 15 says there will be civil war. And family, if the Lord said it, it doesn't matter what a man thinks. They can sit around table and come up with solution how to fix it. No, the Lord said it's going to happen. You can bet your last dollar eh, or whatever currency eh, you use it. You can bet on, on it. You can bet. You, family, we serve the almighty power. The power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh. There's nobody like him. There's no other power above the power that our forefathers called upon. His name is Yahweh. And his son, the king of kings, the one coming to gather the elect, is Yahweh Shai. So if he says there will be civil war, yes. I just want to bring this out. There will be civil war. There will be no America because it's leading to the end of a kingdom. America, again, is going to be the lake of fire when Yahweh Shai shows up. That place from the east to the west coast, from the north to the south, is going to be a desert after the fire settle. And it's, only, it's, it's going to be what? Animals 
living on the desert. Eh? That's right. That's what is coming. You see, that's what is coming. So yes, this man also predicted. Yeah, but we know family, all praises, honor, and glory to our, our power, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh. He gets the glory because why? He told us this here. Eh? He told us there will be no America from the beginning. Ezra. Go and check out when Ezra came onto the scene. More than 2003, close to 3,000 years ago. Eh? That's right. There will be no America. America was created for a short season. You see, so family, that is what is happening. And here, when the Lord said, let the weak say I'm strong. Look at this. Iraq resistance announced five operations against U.S. Israeli forces. Think about that for a, for, for a second. Where in history, where all these proxies are now rising up against, uh, against what? Against America. Eh? The most powerful empire. That's right. In the world. Now you have all these proxies. Some of them, family, you see them, it's very hilarious. Eh? They are wearing their slippers, firing uh, missiles over their shoulders. You see? That's what the Lord is. That's what the Lord says in the book of Joel. Is it Joel 3? Mm -hmm. Let's go there. It says, let the weak say I am strong. Eh? You see? This is the lowest movie. It doesn't matter you have 850 army bases in the world. You have all these nuclear missiles, all these drones, all these technologies. No. At the end of the day, it is the Lord that is directing this. Eh? All these nations are rising up against who? America. It says here, proclaim. This, it says here, proclaim. Proclaim. Announce. Eh? Broadcast it. Eh? Oh, yay. It said, proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all men of war draw nigh. Let them come up into what? The valley of Jehoshaphat. Eh? We read this already. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. The Lord wanted you to hear it again. So he gets all the glory. Now let's read it. The Islamic resistance in Iraq claims responsibility for five operations carried out against U.S. forces in Syria and Iraq as well as the Israeli occupation forces in Occupy Palestine. The Islamic resistance in Iraq on Sunday claimed responsibility for five operations that took place in the region targeting the U.S. forces in Syria and Iraq as well as the Israeli occupation forces in Occupy Palestine. Eh? Yes, it's not stopping. Mm -mm. It's not stopping until America leaves, and America is never going to leave. Relinquish Middle East to what? To Russia and China and, and uh, Iran? No. That's how the Lord set it up. You see, they're going to fight for it. And the Lord is the one bringing all of them. He's going to sit there and judge these nations, pour his fury upon them. And when our king, Yahweh Shai, shows up, guess what they're going to be doing? They're going to put all their differences aside. And second Ezra chapter 13 and fight the second coming of the Lord. Are you listening to this? They're gonna fight Yahweh Shai and the angels. Family, prepare your heart for it. And now it listen to this. And this is the demon. Look at them. Look at them. This man here, he is full of all type of wickedness. When you open the dictionary, you should see his face right beside wickedness. That's right. Caught orchestrating plot to what? Uh, you know what, uh, delete what, uh, Trump chances of becoming president. This is all going to create chaos. That's what we love, eh? And billionaire globalist, you know, uh, his name, George S-O-R-O-S. And, uh, eh, you know that, you know that, yeah. Hillary Clinton have joined forces to what? Uh, delete Donald Trump chances of becoming president in 2024. An independent investigation has discovered family the law says what well, a kingdom divided cannot stand oh yes prepare yourself 2024 is going to be a glorious year right eh? this is what we look forward to we don't want no come we want escalation upon escalation they are the one that said they said they want poly crisis poly crisis why many crises at the same time but they don't know that they are going to destroy their own world in their mind they think what well, their kingdom is going to go on forever but this is the end this is their demise it's going to be spectacular because they never thought that this kingdom will ever come down. Eh? But it's the Lord that is doing all of it. Beloved, this is the time to rejoice and look forward to seeing your king. Eh? Now listen to this. This is coming from uh, RT. It says, debt could destroy U.S. economy. Oh, we know that. 
That's right. JP Morgan boss. Jamie Dimon calls for the snowballing U.S. debt burden to be addressed before it turns into crisis. The U.S. economy is heading towards disaster as the vast national debt continue to mount. JP Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon said in an interview with Fox News earlier this week. Oh yeah, we know that. It's called poly crisis, family. Financial collapse, and then they're going to give, it's going to give them a chance to uh, introduce the microchip. That's what we're waiting for. Bring the microchip. Stop playing. Just bring it. Bring the mic. Collapse the system and bring the microchip. And let's call this thing. Okay, let's call it already. We want to go home. We want the kingdom. We want your shy to rule. We want your shy to rule. So, family, I just want to bring that out quickly to tell you yes, three U.S. Uh, servicemen were deleted. And then, uh, yes, over 30, 30 plus injured. So this is going to escalate things in the uh, in the region, and we said we can't wait. But let's bring our, uh, let's read a, a few verses here in the book of uh, Isaiah 34 and glorify the Lord, family. This is all about feeding you, eh? This is just a pleasure to do the will of the Lord, man, eh? What was family? Our kingdom is next, eh? It's a better is the end of a thing and than the beginning of it thereof. The end of this wicked kingdom is coming to an end. So you're supposed to be rejoicing. Hmm? Righteous kingdom is coming. And it's a message for the nations. You hear that? A message for the nations. All the heathen nations. The Lord Yahweh, the creator of the heaven, is saying, listen. It says, come here and listen, O nations of the earth. Let the world and everything in it hear my words. The sovereign Lord is speaking. That's right. It says, for the Lord Yahweh is enraged against the nations. His fury is against all their armies. You hear that? When Yahweh Shai shows up, he's going to level all your militaries. That's right. Because in his kingdom, just like King Solomon, it will be peace. His, one of his titles is Shiloh. Shiloh means peace. And that's what he's bringing. He wants peace. He's not, nobody's going to be fighting him. He's going to come destroy all of you, your military, and you guys not going to have access to the air anymore. Nobody's flying to Jamaica to go and sit on the beach. And no, only the Israelites are going to have access to the air. Brakata Yahweh Bashem Yahushal. Your stupid technology and all that is going to be done away with. You see, that's what Yahweh Shah is bringing. He said, For the Lord Yahweh is enraged against the nations, his fury is against all their armies. He will completely destroy them, dooming them to slaughter. Does this sound like the Lord is coming to play with you? Your military. He's coming with angels, with ships, thousands and thousands of them. You think your military, your drone, your aircraft, your stupid submarine is going to stop the king of kings? He said, their dead will be left unburied and the stench of rotten bodies will fill the land. The mountains will flow with their blood. Is anybody listening to this? Is anybody reading these books? Hey? But you go to the church, they tell you the God, the Lord is it's good all the time. Oh my Jesus, it's good all the time. No. That's not the power that we serve. Not the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You guys are seven sweet baby Jesus. Blonde hair, blue eyes, eh? pale skin. He doesn't exist. He does not exist. That's an idol. We serve the true power. This is what he's saying. He says they are dead. The slain of the Lord. Jeremiah 25, 33 tells you. It's going to cover the entire earth. He said their dead will be left unburied. And the stench of rotten bodies will fill the land. The mountains will flow with their blood. You hear that? You hear that? Does it sound like the Lord is coming to play? No, he's not coming to play. Beloved, I will leave it there. Eh? I will leave it there. So yes, expect this thing to escalate. You see, expect this thing to escalate. All we have to do is stay prayed up. Lock in. Family, lock in. Don't get distracted. Lock in. We have to lock in. Eh? We're not wavering. The king is coming. He has given us enough to believe this message. To believe. You've seen everything that's happened around you. Civil war, third world war, famine. It's all falling apart. Financial collapse. 
Hey, this is CEO of what? Of uh, what is it called? Um, uh, JP Morgan. They all know it's over. Hey, the cut is out of the bag. The system, it is done. America, as you know it, family, you can put a fork in it. It is done. It is over. And I will leave it there. Beloved, all praises, honor, glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahweh, the only power that matters. And his only begotten son, our king, the redeemer of Israel. Is there anybody like him? No, there's nobody like him. His name is Yahweh Shad. And we thank the Lord that he found us worthy to put this glorious gospel to allow us to become teachers. And family, we take pleasure in doing this work. And I hope you are edified. All praises, honor, and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shad. The end of a wicked kingdom. Whew. Thank the Lord for that.